Kuroki Gensai, the Almighty Beard, Devil Lance wielding Wisdom King of the Kangen Universe, versus Masashi Miyamoto, the legendary samurai and strongest of the past in the Bucky Universe. What would happen if these two clashed? Who is stronger? And does this fight make any sense? Everything will be revealed in today's video. To begin, I do think this fight makes sense considering both of the characters roles and narrative in the respective series. Kuroki is an assassin who spends all of his time getting stronger and when hired he gets the job done. Currently in the Kang and Omega story, he has the best argument of being the second strongest in the universe, that being right after Shenmue Long, who for reference has close to 5,000 years of experience and is leagues above anything else we've ever seen in Kangen. For example, we have these four try and attack Wulong. This guy is a top level bodyguard captain. This is the current fang of Metsudo Misasa. We know this guy as one of the personal bodyguards of Metsudo, who was revealed as a previous fang during the time skip between Kangen Ashura and Kangen Omega. And then we also have Kure Hollis, one of the strongest Kure clan members. When all four of them tried to jump Wulong, wielding weapons as well, they got low diff, stunning Oma to his core. Kuroki was then shown capable of fighting this monster, having such a good performance in their quick exchange that Wulong considered him the closest to what he's looking for, which is referring to an equal, someone he can have an all out fight against, which he previously viewed as only himself, the other version of Wulong within, known as the Tiger Connector pretty much. With all this said, Kuroki, number two strongest in the verse, no one cares what you say about Katsuya, bro has not appeared in Kangen Ashura or Kangen Omega yet, for those of you who are going to mention it. Now for Masashi Miyamoto, I wouldn't say right now in the current manga, that being Baki Rahan, that Masashi should be regarded as the second strongest. Of course, number one is Yujiro Hanma. Yuchiro shouldn't be included due to various anti feats, his lack of showings in the story. I've done many videos covering why he isn't exactly the strongest. Baki Hanma, I would regard as the current second strongest in the Baki story. However, if Masashi was to be resurrected again, which is outlined in the story as a possibility when I guess the universe is ready for it, I would say he's definitely close to that range of power. And ever since he was removed in that unfortunate way to leave out a few words, we've had reference and mention of him multiple times, whether it be in the Sumo arc or even recently in Baki. Rahan, demonstrating the impact he had on the story and how he'll probably always need to be respected even if he never returns. But with all this said, Kuroki vs Masashi does make sense as I guess the most logical matchup in a cross verse setting between these two. We already have Baki Hanma vs Takita Oma as the two protagonists that we got to see animated. We have Shenmue Long vs Yudra Hanma as the two strongest ones that are way above pretty much everyone else in their respective universe at a narrative level and pretty much what they portray in respective stories. And then the one that's also a top tier, Kuroki and Masashi Miyamoto, two characters that were able to push the strongest more than anyone else arguably. Now something else that enhances this matchup is their fighting styles do kind of make sense for a clash to be possible. The Almighty Beard, as we know, relies on his hands with the technique known as the Devil Lance. That's his main move, that's what he uses to fight. Masashi Miyamoto is similar in that regard when we take the strongest version of him, something that is still misunderstood by quite a few people. We learned in his various flashbacks that before he died, he finally learned about the next evolution of his two swords under heaven style, that being the swordless style, something he mastered at the end of the Yu Duo fight resulting in the most skilled and arguably strongest version of Masashi as he proceeded to use this style again in the final fight of the arc against Baki Hanma. You could make arguments that AP wise when he's using a sword he's more deadly, that's why he used it against Pickle and some of the other fighters. However if we look at the narrative provided with Masashi, him not requiring a sword using his swordless style 
is the most perfected version. Him going all out in a fight, a fight where he wants to truly test himself rather than just slaying a beast. So in the context of fighting Kuroki, him being swordless does make the most sense. For Kuroki to fight Masashi Miyamoto, it's likely the case he needs to be hired as an assassin, which considering the impact he had on the Bakiverse and the amount of people Masashi killed with those various police officers and a main character in Retsu, someone out there wanting to hire Kuroki for this job is a possibility within a narrative of a crossover like this. There's also various things pointing at Kuroki also seeking a challenge, wanting to fight someone on his level to truly test himself. Therefore, when you consider the impact the name Masashi Miyamoto has, that is something that Kuroki probably would be interested in fighting. Even Yujiro with that name alone lost his mind thinking about the clash and was having the time of his life before it was cut short by the almighty Motobay, which resulted in one of the most rage inducing moments from Yujiro himself and us as a fandom. Now when it comes to Masashi Miyamoto, he will fight anyone that pulls up on him, you don't need to worry about that. So the fight is set up, they have reason to fight one another, how will it really play out? The breakdown of that requires me to go over a similar move both of them share. In Kangen, it's known as pre-initiative and in Baki it's more known as brain reading or that's how it's described as in the various panels. Something very interesting and cool about this fight is in Kangen, Kuroki is pretty much the representation of this ability. That's why it was introduced and he's from what we've seen so far the best user of it. And then for Masashi Miyamoto, it wasn't introduced with him initially. However, we learned the most about it when he was fighting Baki, when of course he used it against him. So the technique in question in Kangin is the following. To keep it simple, predicting the inception of intent for the purpose of dodging before your opponent attacks or striking before they attack as well, for the goal of always being ahead of your opponent knowing what they're going to do. There's various panels describing it in slightly different ways, but to keep it very simple, this is how it's described. For the Baki one, it's very similar. For example, we have this scene where Masashi used the brain reading ability, supposedly, to get the signal from Baki that allowed him to move in advance. However, Baki was also reading his mind, meaning he attacked before Masashi moved allowing Baki to land the attack and win the brain reading exchange in that instance. In concept, both abilities are the same. If you go hyper specific on what's stated by certain characters and how the Baki version of the ability is described, it could be argued as superior in every way. But if we're being fair and considering the most logical outcome, it's probably the same ability just described in a slightly different way with the whole brain reading aspect. Therefore, with that said, there's no real way to say who is better at using this ability, meaning it's probably a stalemate. I would say they're equal for the regards of this video. If you do want to learn more about pre-initiative foresight from Kangen and the brain reading ability in Baki, I went into a lot more detail in my recent Koron Baki Hanma vs Koron Tokita Oma video, describing how much stronger both fighters get and which one is truly stronger looking at everything in the current manga for both series. Now to go over a comparison of feats and where Masashi and Kuroki scale. We know the ogre was able to stop an earthquake in early Baki. There's various calculations done for this that have a wide range of results but some that are more reasonable and accepted. We know Masashi Miyamoto was able to fight and be scaled to a stronger version of Yudro, so him outright being above that level of power is a guarantee. Kuroki also scales to or most likely above the power of shaking this entire stadium and volcano, something performed by Wakatsuki in Kangen Omega. Also having a similar showing back in Kangen Ashra as well, making it consistent. Kuroki being able to tank this very same blow, I think most people agree that's likely the case. 
multiple of them non-stop? Maybe not, but based on Kuroki's defensive showings, which is probably number one in the verse, as shown again against Shenmue Long, he's definitely able to tank something like that, meaning his durability can be scaled above this level. We also get this outright shown when Oma was able to perform this feat when he was younger and injured. He did the same thing against Kuroki, but potentially at a stronger level considering he also used the advance. You could say Kuroki's Devil Lance is stronger than Oma's Master's attack here, or that it's weaker. I make the argument that they're pretty close in power. Oma's technique in this instance combines his own power plus the opponent's power being sent back as well. So Kuroki being at a pretty high level of durability and overall power considering how you scale characters in videos like this, it does make him closer to the pretty much regular Bucky Bear scaling what is more agreed on when using the earthquake stuff. There are ways to argue that Bucky Burst is physically stronger than that depending on how you view the earthquake stopping feat. Some other specific moments, for example, if you do consider Pickle tanked the meteor that killed the dinosaurs or something close to that, you could argue you draw it, which means Masashi as well, is much stronger than that. Also using the nuclear bomb argument for you draw as well with the various statements. But if we're being fair, it is quite close. But I have to say at the highest end, it does go to Masashi Miyamoto. For speed, we can scale Masashi above this you draw statement of him being able to dodge point blank lightning. This didn't actually happen in the story as if stated by the narrator. If that was to happen, Yujo would be fine with him showing the ability to tank lightning as well. So it does bring up the question whether he would actually dodge, but still it's something stated. We do have a feat from Masashi Miyamoto, which is one of the best in the series as well. This one here, it does really depend on calculations and whether you wank it to an insane degree or this low bullet. So the speed could be like hypersonic or could be way above that. There are various other things to say Masashi scales above light if you consider everything about this i did a big like five minute rant about the possibility of this not being the case in again my bucky vs oma video and some others kuroki on the other hand if you want to use pure statements alone you could say he's above lightning considering his fight against ray there's a few other ways to get his speed pretty up there but not quite as high as when you wank bucky characters especially a top tier like masashi if i'm being fair with what's actually shown not really like stated with some random statement that people lack the context of where it's disproven in the very moment. They're actually very similar in speed, but again, the highest end does go to Masashi Miyamoto. But even with all of that considered, Kuroki Gensai isn't known for being the fastest or physically strongest. He's known for being able to throw the right attack at the right moment and defeating people with that raw Chad experience and how he's mastered his craft to the utmost degree. You could say that is similar to Masashi Miyamoto, but with more crackhead energy considering he's a Ducky character and how Bro looks in the series. If I had to say who is stronger, I would say Miyamoto with the highest end arguments. Do I think the fight would be close in a crossverse setting? Of course it would, that's how something like this would be written. I do think both are very comparable and a pretty perfect matchup. Let me know what you think about all this down below. Shout out to these members, absolute mad lads. Check out Gamersubs, the official partner of the channel with a 10% discount code in the description. All these amazing products, highly recommend checking them out. That's it guys, peace.